the first qualifying session of 2024 is completed and you'd never guess who's on pole position. Max Verstappen has picked up from where he left off by securing pole position for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Joining myself, Nick Golding from Racing News 365.com to discuss what was actually quite an exciting qualifying is lead editor Ian Parks. Ian, Max on pole, but probably not by the margin that even Red Bull expected. It was much closer than I think we all thought it would be. Hi, Nick. Hi, everyone. I told you. I, when we discussed this last <laughs> night, up. Nick, <laughs> when we discussed this last night, I did say it will be Max on pole eventually. I was quite surprised myself, in all honesty, going into qualifying, given the performance of Carlos Sainz coming out of uh, the testing last week, coming out of FP3, which was, which was, as you always know, is a reasonable indicator. Although, of course, with Bahrain, you have the difference in conditions. I did actually pick him going into qualifying to be on pole position. But as we've seen, Max came through, the RB20 performed, and just to give you some sort of comparison, his pole time here compared to last year is half a second up. That's quite an epic performance from that RB20. And that is an amazing platform on which to start for Red Bull and Max Verstappen going into this season. But as you say, it was actually quite a, a decent qualifying session. It was, it was a nip and tuck. Um, I enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed it. it. It looked at one stage as if it was going to be somebody other than Max. So at least it gave us something to talk about. But yeah, Max pulled it out in the bag in the end and fair play to him. Fair play to Red Bull again for what they've done with that car. Hopefully we get a good race. Max himself admitted he was quite surprised to be on pole, fingers crossed indeed. But he, he himself has also said that he is expecting it to be quite a tight race tomorrow, even though we know from testing, from practice, that that RB20 has quite what appears to be phenomenal long run pace. So obviously it's Verstappen on pole. Perez is only P5. Behind Verstappen, it's Leclerc in P2 with Russell in P3, which I think did catch a few people by surprise. Ferrari, though, discuss, let's talk about them because actually... Leclerc P2, Sainz P4, they've looked good all weekend. Have they, do you think, solved their, you know, tyre management woes, which really held them up last season? Are we going to see Ferrari against Max Verstappen tomorrow? You've got to hope so. And, of course, you know, as neutrals, which we are, can I just point that out? We're not anti-Max Verstappen. We're not anti-Red Bull. We are pro Formula 1 Grand Prix racing. We just want to see exciting competition on track we don't want to see a runaway winner we just want good close hard racing and fingers crossed as you already pointed out there mate that uh, we want a, a good close battle Charles can hopefully give him that I, I suspect though deep inside Ferrari that they're not quite sure at the moment they know they've got a good car Vinic Carlos Vinic Charles can it give Max a run for his money I'm not too sure. I don't think so at this stage, but at least they've got a good platform on which to build. And just quickly turning to Mercedes and George Russell, that was probably the biggest surprise, I think. We had a, an expectation, a slight expectation, that Mercedes were there or thereabouts. But to have George in P3, I think that was probably for me the biggest surprise out of qualifying, along with Nico Hulkenberg, making it into P10 with his ass which you call so oh, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll talk about that later because that's, gonna, that's where i'm gonna get my revenge that's all right i'm gonna tip my cap to you on that <laughs> one um just for people uh watching the difference between uh george and lewis hamilton who starts ninth it was only a quarter of a second which just goes to show the fine margins that still exist uh going into this new season third to ninth a quarter of a second and when you consider the gap from first to second we be looking between Max and Charles that's not too far dissimilar with regard to George and Lewis Lewis has uh, conceded in the in the pen afterwards speaking to the media including myself that um, whilst they came out of initial practice on par he decided going into P3 and into qualifying that he would take a different setup 
believing that it would better suit him for the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, as we've seen, I don't think he was quite expecting there, there to be six places difference between himself and George. I think he thought it, there'd be far fewer cars between the two of them. Um, but that has now made it quite difficult for him tomorrow to try and get through the field from P9 and to score a reasonable uh, points paying position. Well, obviously, you mentioned there how close the field was. There was only two attempts between Max and Leclerc. But then from Leclerc in second to Hamilton in ninth, there was only three attempts. The field yeah. is so tight. Because of that, though, with Hamilton, is prioritising race pace as there's now backfired because he is actually quite out of position compared to George. Yeah, he, he knows himself that he's got quite a tough battle uh, tomorrow. Toto Wolff has said exactly the same thing. Mercedes are at least happy, though. Uh, both drivers are happy, in fairness to them. Lewis has conceded that he has a far, far better car beneath him than he did at this stage last season. If you think this stage last season, uh, Mercedes was six tenths of a second away from Max. They have at least closed that gap by about half, so that's not too bad. The car itself is more stable beneath them. It, it's allowing them to do what they want to do. And they know as well that with the updates that are going to be coming quite soon onto the W15, that they have at least have something to challenge with. How soon can they mix it up with Max and Charles at the front if both Ferrari and Red Bull continue to perform? As we've seen right now, that remains to be seen. But, you know, they are looking at least better than they were last season. They are reasonably happy, if not totally happy. Now, you mentioned it a couple of minutes ago, but we're going to bring it back up now. My bold prediction when I spoke to you off camera last night was correct. Hulkenberg, P10, into Q3. You were saying yesterday to me on the phone, no, Haas are in trouble. You know, it's going to be a long season. I think I was right. I was only <laughs> going on the comments of Ayao Kamatsu, the new Haas team principal, speaking to him the night before. And he confidently... And it wasn't like, oh, you know, any kind of fear or dread or anything like that. He said, we're going to be at the back. Not well, that has far from the case. And credit to Nico Hulkenberg for putting that car in P10. Now, the difference is the race. As we saw last year, when Haas managed to obtain a reasonable qualifying position, they hurtled backwards at a rapid rate of knots down the field because their tyre management was absolutely awful their car last year just chewed up the rubber and they just plummeted down that field into nowhere on this occasion they are firmly confident that that will not be the case this year that they might be able to hold their own certainly for a good chunk of the race they can't feel that they've got decent long run pace and i asked nico in the pen afterwards whether he felt he had a car for the points he's not dismissed it so that gives you some idea as to how he's feeling with that car. And while it's far too early to say, um, again, referring to Ayao, he said that himself and owner Gene has a targeting eighth position in the Constructors' Championship. He felt that that was really ambitious. But you've got to feel now that looking at that, OK, it's only one qualifying session. Maybe it's not too ambitious. Maybe they, they can add a degree of realism to that now that eighth is not too far removed when you consider certainly a team like Alpine and obviously Stake, Stake Sauber, whatever name you want to call them, Stake F1 Sauber, Kick, goodness knows what, we know what that name's like. <laughs> They're not happy either with the position they've come out in today. Both Valtteri Bottas, Zhou Guan Yu, they firmly believe they were not going to be in Q1. So they are both quite surprised at the positions they've ended up in, which is 16th and 17th on the grid for tomorrow's Grand Prix. Um, so at least Haas, as just going back to them, because that's the way we started this question originally, as I said, eighth position in the constructors, not beyond the realms of possibility, but it is only a sample of one from 24. There's a long way to go, but at least optimism within the Haas camp, at least, that they've got something this year that they feel they can build on. They know they've got more upgrades coming on that car this year compared to the haste last season where it was a real struggle for updates. So good luck to them. 
and hope they can manage it. Going from the highs of Hulkenberg, let's now talk about the lows. You mentioned the Alpine, a shocking qualifying. They are nowhere. Stake as well were slower than I think a lot of us expected. But also for me, I was quite disappointed by RB, actually. They both got into Q2, but never really looked close to Q3. For you, who were you know the big disappointments today? Undoubtedly Alpine, but of course, there was also going into this qualifying session expectation that they were not going to make it out of Q1. I think our continent had predicted yesterday as well that given what was coming out of the camp from that team, that it was going to be a real tough ask. They've come with a new concept on that car. They've nowhere near hit the ground running. Pierre Gasly said in the pen afterwards after qualifying that there are many areas of that car that need improving. It's not just one significant area that they need to look at which for me is quite a worry. At least if it was one area of the car, you could at least focus on that and you could then try and dial that out. Even if it's going to take three, four, five, six Grand Prix potentially, the fact that there are a number of areas that need looking at, that's going to take a lot more work to try and get right. And I, I think this season is going to be one of enormous struggles for that team and it's going to come as a major, major disappointment all round. They have an awful lot of work to do. Stake, a little bit more uh, optimistic for them. Yes, they weren't happy, as I mentioned earlier, that they didn't get out of Q1. Uh, Zhou Guan Yu suggested that there's something missing from the car. He couldn't quite put his finger on it just yet. He needs a little bit more time to really understand what's going on. Valtteri Bottas especially was surprised not to make it out of Q1. And he knows that uh, there is more to come. He's aware of the upgrades, the updates that are coming, and he feels that with what he knows is going to be made available, that they will ultimately make progress at the field. But as we know at this stage, all the teams are generally going to feel confident making progress given the updates that they've got. It all depends how it shakes out over the course of the season, especially when we think of the budget cap that's in place and the money available for teams to spend. How much have they already spent already on the car? How much have they got available now to make these upgrades and place them on future uh, future cars coming for the remainder of the season? And just finally, that was also a lovely helicopter shot in the background, by the way. Um, just I finally, answer, okay. <laughs> just finally, okay, I'll let you go first or second. A bold prediction and your prediction for the podium tomorrow. Do you want to go first, second? This is your, your choice. Go on, mate. You, you take it first. I've done a lot of talking, too, you go you're, first. You're though. too kind to me. Okay, well, on the theme of Haas, bold prediction, Nico Hulkenberg is going to score at least a point. Uh, so I'm putting that out there now. In terms of podium, I think I think unless something ridiculous happens, I think Max is going to win. I think it's a pretty safe bet. Behind him, I think it's really hard to predict, but I'm going to go for George Russell in second and oh. Fernando Alonso in third. He okay. just seemed somewhat surprised about how close Aston Martin were to the leader. So I've just, a Fernando special, I've got the feeling. Your okay. turn. Okay, then, mate. Here's a question for you. On what basis are you suggesting that Charles Leclerc drops out of that top three? Benny Mani starting in the front row. I, I think one Ferrari strategies in the past haven't been amazing. This will be a big test for them because it's a great chance to not only potentially get two cars on the podium because Carlos is starting P4, but maybe even try and at least challenge Max for part of the race. I'm not saying he's going to beat him, but, you know, and also their tyre management is going to be crucial. Have Ferrari finally cracked the tyre management puzzle? If they have, then my prediction is going to be completely wrong and tomorrow you'll be laughing at me. And if that's the case, I'll put my hands up and say, okay. But I, th I think tomorrow actually is a really important day for Ferrari. And actually, I think Lewis Hamilton might be checking that as well. Because if Ferrari have solve their tyre management woes, then there's a very good chance that already look into next season, Lewis is going to inherit quite a good race car. That certainly seems to, to be the case. And as mentioned earlier, that Mercedes do have a degree of confidence with that W16 now. They do have a good platform. However, I'm going for an obvious max win. I, don't, I can't see him losing it from pole position. No, he has placed that car on pole. I think it might have been a, a little bit of a different story if he hadn't have been there, if he'd been third, fourth or something like that. As appeared to be, 
the indicator coming out of practice that they hadn't quite dialed in that car properly. We know that they hadn't got the setup right coming out of testing. And that's what they've been working on over these past two days to ultimately get the right setup for the car. They clearly now appear to have done that given the gap between first and second between Max and Charles at the front of the grid. But I'm going for a Ferrari 2-3 with Charles ahead of Carlos. I just oh. think, yeah, I, I just think the Ferraris, they look good for me. And I just think they're going to have the edge over, over George and Mercedes. If, as Lewis indicated, that they have uh, took different paths with regard to set up, that George went, went more down the one lap route, Lewis down more of the race route, then you've got to suggest that on that basis that George will perhaps not be as strong in the race and ultimately the, the Ferrari of Carlos, as you said, who starts for, will ultimately get past him. In terms of the surprise, I think Yuki Sonoda did well in that RB. He quali you know, he's qualified 11th. He weren't too far away from a top 10 position. He knows, and he's speaking to him afterwards, he feels that he's... His RB is going to be really strong on race pace, so I'm going for him to get a, a good points finish tomorrow. Probably looking top seven, top eight. There's, there's, that's my outside bet that's, prediction. That's, for... that's bold. That's bold. I'll, I'll give you that. That's a bold prediction. That's, that's more bold than you were telling me on the phone last night, so I'll give you that one. <laughs> Ian, Thanks, mate. good stuff as always. Go and get yourself a winter jacket or a blanket or because all you've been saying is how cold it is out there. It I is. would take Bahrain weather right now, so it's fine. It, I, I get that, but let me tell you, this is really unseasonable weather for Bahrain. We've normally got lovely warm uh, temperatures in the evening. It is far from that. It is really cool, really, as I said, unseasonable for what we would expect. Different next weekend in Saudi Arabia. We're going to be back to some nice warm, hot weather during the day and during the evenings. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, a jumper in Bahrain at this time of year <laughs> doesn't happen. But I also need a jacket. It's that cold. I need a jacket on top. Well, you're, you're already looking here to Saudi Arabia. Let's get tomorrow's <laughs> race day done with first, okay? For those who are watching this video, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. For myself and Ian, we will see you tomorrow. See you later. Thanks, folks. Take care.